grace we have been saved through faith And it's not from ourselves It is the gift of God Not by our works so that no one can boast We are called to be free But we do not use our freedom To live for sin And so we serve and love each other Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Alright. Alright, I'm Steve Newton. I'm Michelle Newton. And we're going to give our testimony here. So, um, I'm originally born in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, lived there until I was about 13. Moved to Utah in 1980. So, um, and then how that came about was my mom and my dad uh, divorced when I was five years old and uh, my mom used to, as I was telling you, that my mom used to send me to a little Baptist church just down the street every now and then, but she never went. I would, not once have I seen my mom go to church, really, during that time. And uh, but we had friends that lived down the street that used to go to a Church of Christ and then we used to every now and then just go there and do activities with them you know they invite us for activities and stuff like that so i think from that i got a little basic belief in jesus uh at the moment and then uh but then like I said my mom and dad divorced when i was five years old and then i kind of went off with my friends and never really hardly went to church and whatever so um after a year well, within the first year of my mom's divorce, she met someone else from where she was working at. And then uh, she uh, remarried, and that was two years after the, the divorce, so I was seven at the time. She remarried this gentleman, and uh, I don't call him a gentleman, but this man. And uh, then uh, for three years, he was uh, abusing my sister, and my mom found out and then uh, she filed, you know, kicked him out of the house, filed for divorce and he did a lot to try to make it sound like it's my sister's fault and all that kind of stuff, you know. But during that, uh, the time that uh, she filed for divorce, kicked him out, we, we went through a period there to where he was harassing us, threatening to kill us, he would uh, break the windows out of our house. He would uh, put sugar in the gas tank of our car and slice the tires, and so we could. We never had a ride. We never had, you know. And uh, he would park right in front of the house. He'd call and say, he's, you know, that he get get angry at my mom and he threatened he's going to kill us. And then he'd park right in front of the house and he would stay there all night long. And uh, back then there wasn't uh, any stalking laws and stuff that would. Uh, all they could do is just tell him to leave and then he'd leave and then an hour he'd be right back. That's all the law could do at the time. So we were, we were living through this time of fear and stuff, but um, that during that time, after a year that uh, this was going on, because the, for some reason it took a long time, it took two years before the divorce got finalized, but after a year my sister became a Christian. She ended up meeting this this guy and they were boyfriend girlfriend she was uh, only 17 at the time and uh, she actually became a Christian she ended up getting pregnant by him and she became a cr Christian from understand while she was pregnant and uh, so it, it changed her life because she was she was into you know some drugs and stuff before all that because of what happened and so, but all of a sudden we started having more missionaries come to our house and at this time my sister, like this was a year after the split, he was still harassing us, still making threats and doing all that stuff. And uh, so she, she was already living with uh, her boyfriend at the time and uh, they were engaged to get married so they ended up getting married. So she wasn't living with us, so it was just my brother and I uh, and my mom. So. Um, but we had these missionaries that started coming over and uh, never heard of Mormonism. Ne never knew anything about it. Never even, didn't even know what it was. So out of curiosity, we, we let them, my mom and I let them in because we were living this time of fear. And so 
we we let them in. We listened to what they said, and you know, was, was just curious of learning more. And uh, so my mom and I joined the church. My brother wouldn't. My brother didn't want anything to do with it, so he went his own way. So we we joined the church, and uh, we got pretty active there in Iowa. But the closest LDS church was actually about 40 minutes away. So we had a we had to have someone come and give us a ride almost every Sunday to go there so but uh, but after uh, two years of him harassing us my mom uh, tried to have a talk with him to get him out of our lives you know and to leave us alone and when she did he uh, took her out to the woods and he raped her uh, put a gun to her head and raped her and so she tried to get the law to do something, but they said they couldn't do anything because they weren't legally divorced. So, and there was no laws at that time for marital rape or, you know, so now, which now there is laws for that. But, uh, so she, she kind of went uh, off the deep end and was going to commit suicide and all that. And so she ended up in, in the hospital. So then my, my brother and I had to go stay with my uh, with my grandma and grandpa at the time. And while we were there, uh, he blew our house up. He got in there and he just he opened the gas line to the furnace, lit a fire in the basement and yeah. gave plenty of time to get out Sounds of there. Sounds like a movie, man. Yeah. <laughs> so he blew our house up. And so we had to... So and that's why she was in the hospital and we were, we were uh, staying our... Uh, grandparents so um, so then uh, what happened there was uh, we, we we collected insurance money and we ended up moving just into an apartment and uh, while we were at the apartment he found out about six months after that he found out where we lived and then started harassing us again and showing up there at the apartment and, and then then he ended up uh, getting two guys from the high school my brother was going at to beat my brother up and then, then now, now that it was getting physical, my mom decided that we have to leave state. We got to get out of there. So we had our LDS friends at the time that uh, had relatives here in Salt Lake, and because we, want, we wanted to go somewhere where he went and have a clue that we go, because he knows where, like we had a family that lived in uh, um, Alabama and Minnesota and stuff like that. So we know he would try try to hunt us down if. Uh, we found out where we went so so we used fake names and everything and we ended up getting out of Iowa and then uh, got here to Salt Lake and then I then uh, I, we were pretty active in the LDS church at the time and uh, and being a convert so I was converted when I was 11 being a convert I didn't I as a lot of people grew up in the LDS church learned more I didn't know as much about the doctrine you know as someone who was you know born into it so um but you know i was going to try to learn more about it and you know i mean i knew a lot of the basic sayings and stuff and but uh i do remember one time before we did move here that i wanted to share on this was when my sister became a christian and i became a mormon we had a discussion there was a discussion we had and it, it wasn't on doctrinal issues it was on forgiveness uh, my ex stepdad abused my sister, but my sister said, I remember sitting in the car and there was, she said, you know, one of the greatest things that would ever happen to me is that if I go to heaven, I see him there, that he repented and, and that he was there. And I was like, what? <laughs> you, how can you forgive him? <laughs> you know, what he did to you? Because I wasn't forgiving, you know, in that sense, you know. And plus, uh, from what I already knew about LDS doctrine was, it is that he's there's no way he's going to be in the same place we are you know he's going to be in some lower <laughs> level you know he, he's not going to be there so but that that already stuck in my heart and, or in my head and always made me wonder how could she be so forgiving so but uh okay so we're, we're here in utah and uh the the church here was a, a little different you know i mean it was like the people are totally different than what they were there in iowa and you know, it's almost kind of a culture shock in a way. So, but um, um, what actually started making me question uh, things is that in, in ninth grade, I, I took seminary. And then when, 
And by this time, I've actually read the Book of Mormon. And then I'm, I'm doing seminary, and then I, re I recall in seminary that he's teaching on like the three kingdoms and stuff, the, the teacher. And then I just like, I have, I read, just read the Book of Mormon. None of this is in the Book of Mormon. <laughs> You know, it only teaches of heaven and hell in the Book of Mormon. There's nothing about the three kingdoms, you know, and and about men being able to be exalted to become a god. You know, I'm not getting any of this out of the Book of Mormon, you know. So I, I started questioning things then. And then more the more doctrine he, I was learning from him, I was like, I'm not finding this in the book. I'm having a problem, you know, between the, what he's teaching and what I've read, just, just in the Book of Mormon. So... Um, and then uh, reading the Doctrine and Covenants, I, I realized certain a few little contradictions there too that that came to my that was pointed out to me not not by somebody but just by me reading it. So then I started having problems, and then uh, with it by by times ninth grade was over, I pretty much quit going to the church. I came to a conclusion at that time that it, it's not the one true church, you know, and I and then I. Uh, uh, decided well I'm going to just go my own way and you know I don't believe there is any one true church and, and you know maybe if there is maybe Mormonism is the closest you know but so I just kind of started partying with friends so throughout high school I kind of became a partier <laughs> so but then when I finished high school or came came to finish high school I decided um, I better do something in my life so I decided to join the military and uh, I ended up uh, going in the Navy. And while I was in the Navy, um, you know, first going in there, I started drinking with all the guys, you know, having fun and partying with all the, being a typical sailor, you know. And uh, uh, I got assigned, I ended up uh, getting assigned to, uh, well, actually, when I first got to the squadron, it was what's called temporary assigned duty, TAD. I had to serve 90 days. Uh, in the what's called first lieutenant where I'm, I'm pretty much a janitor for the squadron you know I'm cleaning all the facilities and everything so I remember uh, the, the barracks of which they assigned us to was uh, it, it w multiple guys had to share the same room and then you had to share the same shower you know and then and there's this big lobby and where everybody goes to watch TV and then as I went in there I, I always I grew up loving Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris and all the martial art movies, you know, I was into that. So I noticed this guy there and he had some Kung Fu shoes on. So I asked him, you know, was he into Kung Fu? And so we kind of hit it off, we became friends. I had no idea he was a Christian at the time, but we, we hit it off as friends. And uh, so we used to just meet each other there and uh, then, you know, we just talked. And then uh, after my temporary assigned duty, I got assigned to the, as being a plane captain, which is the same as an Air Force crew chief, where you strap the pilots in and tell them to start the engines, and you taxi them out to the runway and send them off. Well, he was, he became my instructor, because that's what he was. So, while we're out there and doing stuff to the airplane, and uh, when the planes come back, we had to clean it. We had to, we had to, we're the ones actually like the service person. Like, we're like uh, your, uh, We had to clean it, we oil it, we fuel it, and whatever. So, um, while he's teaching me all this stuff, he started sharing Christ with me, his belief. And uh, he was telling me, you know, well, he asked me if I believe in Jesus. I said, yeah, and I told him, you know, I said, I'm a Mormon, but I'm pretty much a Jack Mormon because at the time I wasn't active, you know. He said, but I don't know, but I don't wholeheartedly believe in it at the time because I've had issues, you know. So then he started sharing with me about well how do you think someone's saved and so we started going over that you know of course it's like well if you're good enough and whatever and it's like well then you started pointing out the scriptures to me what the scripture says and so he just challenged me to get in the scriptures and then uh, I just remember one day in the barracks I knelt down and said Lord uh, what he's saying is true I know because you know he's shown me the scriptures here and all that and so I, I come to believe right there is when I let the Lord in my heart and from there on it's you know it's been a journey so and then I, I learned more actually searching in the scriptures more I was still like even my first year as a Christian I was still getting drunk with the guys I got to the point because I decided I was gonna read the Bible so I got to the point where I said no drunk ever inherit the kingdom of God 
the moment I read that, I haven't been drunk since then. So, <laughs> and that that was in uh, 1987. So, so I haven't been drunk since then. And then, uh, um, not saying I still I'm not without sin, of course. I mean, <laughs> but that's God's grace, and that's what we find out about scriptures. And then uh, just went from there. So and that's how I came to know the Lord. Well, and I. I came to know the Lord through Steve witnessing and sharing, um, but I'll start more from from the beginning. I my earliest memory as a child, uh, I was five years old, and am I born into? I, I'd say maybe a heathen family. Um, really, no, no faith. Just lived in the world, and I uh, I remember being five years old and standing across this what I thought then was this huge precipice of, you know, valley and say and looking at the sky and something said to me there there is a God. And so I, I remember hanging on to that, and I, I did go back later. It was certainly not a big precipice. It was not. It was a little teeny valley, and I remember crawling across the this big culvert. And anyway, <laughs> as, a, as a child, I do remember holding on to that, though, and, and believing that there was a creator. Um, and then I just kind of by the time I was five, um, well, about five, we had moved to Moab, Utah moved up here when I was about 10 years old. I still was not active in any type of church, just lived in the world. And um, I was an obedient kid for my mom. And, and uh, my parents were divorced by then. And uh, I ran into a friend in the neighborhood who had had Mormon missionaries coming to her house and she invited me to come. So I went to her house and I was incredibly intrigued by what they were saying because I did have a desire in my heart to know God. Um, didn't know where that desire came from, but I did want to know more. And so I met Elder Nolan and Elder Bam Bam and the uh, Bam Bam, Bam Bam, Elder Bam Bam. <laughs> I still have my bi my Book of Mormon signed by both of them. Um, so I, you know, I'm at this girl's house. I meet them, and I was kind of a spunky little kid. And so I, um, I scheduled for them to come to my house Wednesday the next week at seven o'clock p.m ran home and told my mom at the appointment <laughs> and so my mom's like what's this mormon mormon thing going on and my um uh her my mom's boyfriend is i would say a jack mormon but uh, he you know born into the mormon church he says to my mom it's okay it'll be good for her so they come and they start doing their lessons and i get to know these two young guys really well and i'm like 10 years old and i'm very intrigued in what they're saying and my mom, you know, requires my sister and my brother to go through the teachings with us too. Um, and then at the at the end, you know, I prayed at that burning, and then I became a Mormon. I, I was baptized and, and incredibly active in the, the youth group. I had um had several girls at girls camp. You know, years of girls camp. I uh, had baptisms for the dead seven times. I. I was about 14 years old, and one of my uh, personal progress goals. I actually still have the book, was to bear my testimony or over a certain period of time in order to achieve the goal. And I had done this three times. It was my fourth time to meet the goal. And my youth leader, Sister Nelling, bumps me and says, hey, it's, it's fast Sunday. Go up and share your testimony. So I decide that I'm going to share my testimony. And I, I'm pretty nervous to speak in front of people. So I, I'm nervous to get up there. But as I'm starting to talk, I started to say that I know that this church is true. And, and right in that moment, I'm going to cry now. The Holy Spirit totally came to me and said, no, you don't. And as I'm standing there in front of this entire congregation, and I'm saying, and I know Joseph Smith was a true prophet. And the Holy Spirit said to me, no, you don't. And then at any time before this, I had never, never questioned my faith. I had never questioned my faith in the church. I, my, I mean, I was so wholeheartedly active in the church. and. Um, so then I said, I know that the current day president or prophet, Ezra Taft Benson, is a true prophet of God. And the Holy Spirit said to me, no, you don't. And I was so confused and I was very lost at that time. And of course my face is beat red and I am crying, but they all think that it's just because of my confession of faith <laughs> in the Mormon church. So I, I'm about 14 then and I um, continue to be active in the church. And although that questioning led me to start you know, wanting to know why. I, I would go to church and I would want to know what, you know, why would that come to me, number one? But number two, why am I not being taught things in the church? I mean, I, I recall being it being 
uh, be the you know be the good Mormon is a woman you would get married in the temple and you would have your children and that's what my path in life would have been and that always kind of came back to me is that that's it I mean that's how I'm supposed to that's how I'm supposed to go to heaven is and that's the plan that God has for me so uh, by the time I'm 16 Steve had come home from leave from the the Navy and he I purposely came to witness to my brother. I was a newborn Christian and I was like, I'm going, I'm coming home on leave and I said, uh, I'm going to witness to, because her, her brother was one of my best friends at the time, so I'm like, I'm going to witness to him, coming to share the gospel with him. So, let go ahead from there. So he has no idea what's going on with me and, and um, questions that I have. And so when, one day we, my, my brother's nowhere to be found. He's, I don't know where he was. But anyway, so Steve and I start spending some time together and we go on a walk one night to find my sister in the neighborhood. Of course, you know, I'm a teenager. He's, he's a young guy, you know. We lived in a... <laughs> I liked him. We lived in a trailer park. <laughs> the Hacienda trailer park there in West Valley at the yeah. time. So yeah. I'm looking for my sister and he starts just sharing the gospel with me. And he starts to tell me about Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. Something that seems so incredibly foreign to me. The way he was presenting the gospel message to me. I was just... I just wanted to know more like tell me tell me why because I had not been taught anything else but Mormonism so he did begin witnessing to me and then through the orchestration of my sister she uh, she gets me to wait for him while he goes back and finishes out his his service with the military and so I spend my entire next summer between my junior and senior year um, studying the Bible and uh, just really you know digging deep into what the scripture has to say and my mom thought I was pretty much crazy that I would spend my summer you know laying out in a lawn chair but reading reading the bible and uh you'd write to each other yeah then that's how Steve actually ultimately I was writing ended up like every other day because uh, I was really studying the scriptures and I was studying things too because I believed I was deceived by the, the book of Mormon and so I did a lot of research on the Bible saying, well, I want to know that this is reliable. Too. So I did a lot of research into that, too. And so yeah. in order for me to believe in the Bible to be reliable, I had to do a lot of research in that. And well, of course, I had tons and tons of questions, too. Yeah. So I would write him my questions and wait for his responses. And, um, you know, the last time I went to do uh, baptisms for the dead, I, I didn't want to go. They knew I was on my way out the door. I. I they knew that I was questioning things, you know, Joseph Smith's first vision. I, I had asked questions, but one of the things that came to be uh, the biggest questioning that that I think had a lot, and God just knew my heart. He knew what I, I needed to know. And um, I had asked our bishop why I why Mormons don't wear crosses. Because, you know, like, you know, Christians wear crosses instead of Catholics. So I wanted to know why don't Mormons wear wear crosses and he said well we don't believe in symbolism well I thought well that's kind of odd but I just kind of like went away I didn't argue yeah. with him I blew it off well then I'm very vocal so I was talking to a Catholic friend of mine at work I worked at Sizzler and we were we were talking I'm telling her you know you guys wear crosses I don't understand why Mormons don't wear crosses and I said you know this is what the bishop told me that they don't believe in symbolism and she said you know you should talk to my my Satan my satanic worship boyfriend or Satan worshiper boyfriend <laughs> whatever I didn't yeah I didn't accept <laughs> that as oh yeah sent me an appointment but um, <laughs> you know I just said okay whatever and so the next day he comes in and we're working and he's she's like he's here and I, I'm thinking well, I didn't set this up but okay so we went in the back where we normally take our breaks and I sit across from this young man and he starts to tell me about the symbolism on the LDS temple, the, the Salt Lake temple. So they have crescent moons and all of that. He starts to tell me that there is a lot of, um, you know, witchcraft and masonry and I did not believe him. I, I said, no, I, you know, I don't, I don't really believe you, you know, thanks for coming. Kind of creepy, but you know, we're done. <laughs> so, um, I never saw him again, and I, I don't even know his name. But I went, I don't, I didn't have a car, so the next time I got to the temple, I would say it was probably a month or so later. I'm standing in front of the temple, looking at the symbols on the temple, checking out everyone that I can find over a door, over a window, on the arches, and I am rubbing my eyes and then looking, and I uh, could not believe that 
the symbols were on the church, but when he said to me, we don't believe in symbolism. There's so, symbols all over it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Stu came home and uh, sold his time back to the military. Uh, during that time, I had still spent, I think it was about seven months of time eight that you were gone. Eight months. Eight months. I spent that entire time studying scripture. And the one thing that I couldn't understand through our letter was the Trinity. I couldn't understand how Jesus could be God. It didn't make sense to me. I, I couldn't grasp all of it. it. You know, it hadn't been shown to me. And so um, Steve came home, and of course we haven't seen each other in eight months, and we have this great romance going on. And, and uh, I could not speak when I saw him. It was actually kind of funny, but I couldn't speak. But anyway, and... I was a little more fit at the time. <laughs> so uh, the first thing I said to him when I was able to get my composure was, how can Jesus be God? And he starts to share with me, and I, I don't even know exactly what you said. I have an idea. Do you, know, do you remember what you said? Um, not totally, but somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in that, that moment, it was revealed to me who Christ was, who the Trinity was, who God was. And in that moment, I confessed my sins, and I said, this is God and the God I will serve for the rest of my life. And he doesn't know. I, I was filled in the Spirit right in that moment, and I just wanted to burst out forth in, in massive awe and cry, right? I'm so happy. I don't know what's happening. And, um, it, it's awkward, though, because we're brand new seeing each other again. And, and uh, so anyway... Um, yeah, that was my moment when I came to know the Lord, and I, that's been um, September 9th, 22 years ago, 23 years ago? 23, 24, yeah. 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 So that, when uh, when she said she'd wait for me, like, because I, I shared the gospel with her when uh, I went back to, like I said, I meant to go share with her brother. I had no clue, because uh, I was at the point to say, Lord, I'm not looking for a wife, I'm not looking for a girlfriend. It, if you will be the one to pick the one for me i'm not when the time comes so i i you know we noticed each other growing up you know because i always knew she'd grow out to be a beautiful young lady but i never had no you know because she's my friend's sister you know i was like i didn't have no idea that i'd ever go out with her or anything <laughs> like that growing up but um god had other plans and then when i left then i prayed i prayed intensely uh, about this and then uh, then I just said okay Lord if she's still waiting for me and writing to me halfway through this cruise then I know she's the one you picked and uh, I remember the very day was the half day the halfway point <laughs> I remember that very day and then I remember praying and stuff and uh, I pretty much heard in my head that she's going to be my wife and so we've been married for 22 years now and so yeah so I knew she was going to be my wife from that from that moment. So, and when I got baptized, it was funny too because I was in the Navy. I was already, you know, I was baptized as a Mormon when I was converted. I was instantly there, and uh, I've been a Christian for a little over a year now. And because uh, this was my second cruise in the Navy that we were on, and I remember uh, we we had this group of guys, five of us, that get together, and we'd always meet and. Uh, worship the Lord, uh, sing songs, pray, and then just get in the Word and discuss it. And then uh, remember, I got to the point where you know what, I want to be baptized. And there was a Filipino guy that his name was Danny. I can't remember his last name, but I was like, I want you to baptize me in our next port. Where our next port was Diego Garcia, <laughs> and it's just a little military island, you know. We pull in, and well, the thing is, we're only there for two days. Well, I ended up being on duty in one day. And, and then he was on duty the next day, so we can't be off the same day. So, okay, so the next one. So we actually got into Australia. So I got baptized in Perth, Australia, from the land down under. Mm -hmm. Got dipped in the land down under. So, and, <laughs> and I asked the Lord, you know, just uh, I just wanted to know that uh, confirmation. And uh, his spirit filled me at the time, and I knew this was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And compared to when I was baptized as Mormon, there was no doubt about it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> well, what about some interactions with your Mormon family and friends after you oh, made it, after it was clear that you weren't buying Mormonism any, anymore and that you became a Christian? What were some of the reactions you guys had? Well, I'll, I'll go with mine because mine wasn't as much. I didn't have as many Mormon friends as probably she has. Mm -hmm. So my, because um, like I said, because by the time I went in the Navy, 
I wasn't active, so most of my friends at the time were non-Mormons anyway. So I, I didn't have a problem with. Uh, uh, my um, yeah. Uh, well, hold, hold on, on though. Ahead. Hold on though, but um, um, but I did for some reason was led to study more about Mormonism, and I. I think the I, I I shared with I met I think it was easy for me to talk to Mormons I don't know what it was is probably because I didn't have Mormon friends persecuting me or anything but I remember at work and mm -hmm. I was sharing with everybody I I get into conversations a few times I've been I even been in actual arguments that I felt bad about mm -hmm. but um, and then when I be, got into the career that I am now I mean I was sharing with everybody and I'd always listen to Christian radio and. and all the other Mormon construction workers would come and ask questions and stuff, and uh, I had the nickname of uh, Little Moses. That's what they were calling me. Is, Where's that Little Moses guy that likes to share with her when I was so? Um, so, but I, my my mom, because I I did mention that my mom and I were both converted. Well, she started questioning it also, and uh, I think her situation was was a little different than mine. She just she saw so much. I hate to say it, but uh, gossiping, backbiting, and uh, other Mormon ladies tearing other Mormon ladies apart, just, you know, and being so two-faced that, yeah, she, that's what made her pretty much leave. And uh, she ended up becoming a Christian. She started going to the First Baptist Church there in West Valley and got really strong in it. And she retired. She's back in Iowa. She's a strong, she's active into uh, my, my sister's church, <laughs> same church there, so. Mm -hmm. But then you go with your yeah like um, I remember the biggest thing that uh, that was said to my mom and my mom was not active um, but the youth leader was saying to my mom it's just a phase she'll come back and and of course um, you know a lot of time during the time I actually came to know the Lord and I was leaving the Mormon Church a lot of my friends were starting to like go on off on in their own lives and so my I did lose friends but I not you know not specifically because of that and in fact the youth group where I was at was predominantly converts to the church. So they, you know, they were starting to get off in their own lives and do their own things. But that's probably the biggest persecution I felt or from them or like judgment saying it's just a phase of something she's going into and it's, she'll be back. She'll be back. So they just kept telling my mom she'll be back. And it was hard to share with my mom because of course in the beginning I just wanted to, to thrash out the negativity that was being taught in the LDS church, the con you know, the contradictions I was seeing, the, the doctrine issues I was seeing. But, um, you know, I've, I've since uh, matured in that and been able to share with my mom just my faith that I have now and, um, and that. But I, I, don't, I don't think that really there was, you know, other than that, a lot. Because the rest of my family, um, my dad's family was estranged from us growing up and uh, came into my life when I was 19. But we went back to family reun reunion and we were able to meet my entire um, Protestant family. <laughs> you know, like just completely different. That yeah. Because of their divorce and that separation, it separated us from ever having any of that teaching in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, my brother, kicking and screaming, was baptized into the Mormon church and he was never active, yeah. never once. And uh, my sister is not active either. So so for me, it was, it was a lot easier for us to leave and, and not have... Uh, you know the constant agitation to this day, um, you know, with them. So, so. any other questions? What about your the brother that you went to go talk to? Where is he now? The my uh, brother? brother, the one that you were best friends with. Yeah. He He's, he lives in St. George. Um, yeah. He at one time did profess the faith and started to attend a church, um, but he's not regular. You know, he doesn't attend regularly, and, and I think even to this day he would. He would question whether or not he was saved. Yeah, well, he he's believes, not active. He, he'll tell you he really believes in Jesus and all now, but he's whether he has a genuine relationship. You know, it's, you know, we're we're praying for him. See what you know, God will get him and his new wife, you know, back into a church or whatever. Right. So we'll see what happens with that. It's up to God. So. I got a question. Uh, did you? You said you didn't know much about about doctrine, uh, Michelle. So, it, what was your belief before and after about Jesus? Did at any time you believe the Mormon doctrine that Jesus was Lucifer's spirit brother? See, I, don't, I don't recall being taught anything regarding wow. Jesus. I was like, taught I, that by the Mormon missionaries. Yeah. And, uh, you know, 
the, the, the missionaries actually taught me a lot of I mean they they taught that man could become a god you know they did say you know what man is god once was what god is uh man may become and i was that by lorenzo snow yeah so um and so that they quoted that to me and talked about that man can become a god you know and i remember because like I said mormonism wasn't even hardly known where i where i lived and me and this one other girl in the whole junior high school at the time was i was in seventh grade Actually, I was converted between sixth and seventh grade, when I, but um, but I remember being in seventh grade. We were the only two Mormons in the whole school. Mm. So yeah, I don't recall like Jesus being in the forefront of the teachings at all. Well, because like, yes, yeah, right? Not. Yeah. It, what was, was your reaction when you when you were disabused of this notion that he was Lucifer's spear brother and that no, actually he's incarnate God? Right. Do you remember how you felt about that? Well, that, yeah. well, I didn't, the I didn't come to that understanding until the, the guy that was sharing, Dale Sparrow, that was sharing the gospel with me while I was in the Navy, you know, because because I already, cha I already had in my mind that I didn't agree with everything of the LDS Church, so I already had oh, certain things I didn't know if I agreed with, so, I mean, matter of fact, uh, during high school, I got listened to Carl Sagan a lot, you know, kind of mixed Mormon doctrine. We, we, we'd have friends to get in discussions, you know? Because most of them were, were kind of, I had, well, I had some that were like Jack Mormons, some that weren't any belief, you know? But we'd get in discussions and kind of like, you know, get in different theologies or whatever and say, well, can you mix what Carl Sagan says with Mormonism and, you know, and kind of, you know, naturalism mm -hmm. with uh, this religion, but... Yeah. Um, so I kind of, I, I guess I ended up being agnostic, <laughs> it would be, would be kind of the term by the time I got, you know, was in the Navy and so. The biggest, I think the biggest thing that I went through coming out of the Mormon church and even as a Christian, um, was going through the, the different masks that are, that I experienced in Mormonism. The, not really being yourself like there you know there, there's things that you have to remove out of your life whether it's a belief you know or you so many things yeah you, you'd have to shed those things and I felt like they were removing masks to get down to who I was to understand the center wow. that I really am yeah. and uh, that's hard that was really hard to go through and, and it took several years even the time I was uh, you know Mormon from 10 to 17 I, it took a lot of years of being a Christian before I was able to get past and through all of that and really, really just let it all go, you know. You know what's funny is uh, being a Mormon in Iowa, being a, being a smaller community of Mormonism there is that I did learn some doctrines more than I did at the church here in Salt Lake. But I learned the more deeper deepness of that doctrine when I was doing seminary. Because it seemed like that's where I was mostly getting indoctrinated more than... I mean, I just remember going to the LDS church here and all I heard was, I know this church is true, I know Joseph Smith is true, I know the Book of Mormon is true. That's all I remember hearing all the time. You know, and you get to the point to where, gosh, it's almost like a, a brainwashing technique, you know, that that there is, it's just suggesting that every time, every time you go there, just, uh, you know, but uh, like I got to the point after I became a Christian that that searching things out is where I, you know, and it's funny too because I, I you know, I remember talking to some uh, LDS people like in, in the construction field that I, I consider my friends, you know, acquaintances or whatever, and I say you, you know, like. I remember talking to someone and saying, yeah, you know that man can become a god according to it. And he's like, I, n I never heard that in the LDS. Really? <laughs> they you, you've been a Mormon all your life, you never heard that in the, you know, and stuff like that. So it was like weird to run into someone that who's been a Mormon all their life and never heard of that. So I kind of wonder if they do keep some doctrine out, uh, you know, just to, maybe because for that very reason. When uh, you said that people would tell you just going through a phase, mm -hmm. how did you, I'm just curious, how did you react to that? Like, what was your response? 
I, it, it was hard, you know, especially when you get that from an adult and you're young and you're, you're like, you know, I, to my mom, I was very vocal of this is not a phase and I'm done and I'll never go back. I mean, that, it was very blunt, I will never go back. But it, I never did really voice it in depth with it either of, you know, particular leaders, but, um, you know, it was just, we won't be seeing each other anymore, basically. We're, I'm done and they let me kind of go on my own little way. So, yeah, I haven't actually seen any of our, our leaders. I mean, I know where they live and I, well, we're Facebook friends, but other than that, I don't have any other community. I did lose a lot of friends in high school because of my faith, right? Like I had a friend once tell me, why do you insert God into everything? And she was my best friend. And then at that point, I lost, you know, I lost her as a friend um, because we were just going just totally two different directions in life. And I, she couldn't understand why I wasn't going the direction she was going because at one time we were together on that. So, so I did lose her as a friend. But, um, you know, I figured that if they're going to, you know, they're gonna support and love me for the direction that I'm going, and they're gonna, you know, and that's that's who I am now, and I'm not I'm not going back. Sometimes we wonder why we're here in the Salt Lake Valley, and but uh, we know there's many people here who don't know you, and that uh, you want to use us to to share the truth with them, Lord, and do it with love and and with a with a kindness and a gentleness that will just uh, they'll see your light, Lord. And that's what we pray for. Th thanks for uh, uh, allowing us to come to Ram Terrace Home and uh, to share our testimony, Lord, and thank you for. The ones who came in to listen to it, and we just hope it uh, will glorify you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.